Right, so I've got two pieces of 3 quarter 5 16 12 inches long. And I'm going to make a pair of front pony shoes. Got my stamp, and my pritchel, a pair of tongs, and my hammer. And that's basically all I'm going to need for the time being. But first of all, we've got to mark the centre. I've just got a little bit of three cornered file there. Just going to balance them on there. Give them a tap. That was the first thing my master asked me to do when I was an apprentice. And if you don't get it right, you don't half whack your hand with the, the steel. Alright, put them in the fire back to back. So we get a pair. Not quite so important with fronts, but certainly with hinds. If you were making a set, you'd always put back to back to back. So, first job, put your toe bend in. Now I always do mine sort of just over 90. I don't know if there is a prescribed angle, but I always do just over 90. Obviously it depends if you're making them specifically for a horse, but that's about what I do. These are just a generic pair, they're not for anybody. Two toenails in. And again, there's probably a formula for this, but it all depends on your toe bend. If you either get your toe bend wrong, or you're building them for a specific animal, they might be in a different place, so I just eyeball them. The same on the other one. Now this uh, three quarter five sixteenths a bit of a bugger to work. It's very prone to twisting. I wanted to use three quarter three eight, but I couldn't find any in the rack, so I just grabbed some of this. It's uh, not quite so bad on smaller shoes, like sort of 10, 11 inches maybe, 10 and a half. But uh, when you get up to this sort of size, they do tend to twist a bit. I say size, these aren't masses, massive. Right, same thing again. Start with the outside heel. That's the next job. Outside heel, outside branch. Now again, people have different ways of doing this. I do mine this way up. Some people turn the shoe the other way up on the anvil and hammer down on it. But this is just the way I've always done it. Then bring your hand up right at the last second keep the heel running down the centre. Heel nail, not too far back. Something that some people do tend to do is put them way too far back. And I'm as guilty as anybody. I suddenly put it in and then think, whoa, that's way too far back. In fact, that one might be a little bit far back. But it'll do. This isn't show shoeing. This is just basic everyday shoeing or shoemaking. Now I just knocked off the little lumps that you get from when you're stamping and pritchling. And I'll just run the pritchel back through again just to clean them out. And then we do the heels. When I was younger, I would do that in the same heat as I did doing the branch, but I'm a bit old and slow these days, so I take a second heat. Just tidy them up with an old rasp. Get my 
tongs to work. There we go. Runs down the middle. Same on the other one. Bring your hand up. And then again, right, that one's twisting, you can see that. And then bring it, your hand up again at the end. That's classic for this size steel, the way it twists. Same again. Not forgetting your pitch. No pitch, a little bit, a little bit more. Haven't made shoes for oh, probably a year or more. I just felt the urge to knock up a couple of pair. Now here I'm just taking those lumps off that you get from punching the steel. And stick the pritchel back through again just to open them up again. Again, do the the heel. Doesn't take a lot. One of these old rasps. Inside branch because this is the inside I'm going to put a bit of a safe edge on it so just tilt it a little bit close up the last I don't know fraction of the branch again lift your hand up at the last second just keep that heel down the center upright a little bit of pitch a bit more pitch Again, just take those swellings off. It all just goes to make a nice smooth shoe. There you go, nothing fancy. I won't bother showing you the heels again. I think you got the idea from that. Just do the inside branch on this one. Again, just lean it over a little bit. Just tap that in. And do your heel. That one's twisted again. Oh, sorry, I've lost the view off the end of that. Just straightening that out because that keeps trying to twist. Once it starts, if you don't get it straight, it'll be a bugger to get out. So you want to get the twist out as soon as possible. Pritchell's not working very well. A few little nibbles on the back. Right, so that was the easy bit. Now we're going to clip them. We're going to put toe clips on these. What I'm going to use is this hammer, which is a modified ball pane. I've drawn the ball out into a sort of a squarish, rounding, rounded, rounded point. So there's no sharp edges on it. Um, there is a video somewhere. I'll put a link in the description somewhere of making one of these. 
So if you haven't seen me do that. Get rid of all these tools. All I need for this is a back pritchel. You don't need it horrendously hot. If it's too hot, it can tear quite easily. Just push the shoe slightly over the edge of the anvil and then hit right in the same spot. And that's what you get, a little lump. Then over the edge of the anvil, draw it towards yourself. Set it down. It's flat and that's what you got. Quite a nice clip. Tidy it up over the beak. Set it at the angle of the foot. Now I'm just trying to even the shoe up a bit. Now I'm just taking this other edge off now. Just a slight bevel all the way around that top edge. Again, it just tidies the shoe up. I don't quite know how it does it, but it just makes it look that much tidier. Just run that round there. You don't want to be squashing anything, you're just literally taking the corner off. Try and get it symmetrical. And then just back pritchel. And we're there. on that. Make sure it's level. And there you go. Not a bad little shoe. So let's just do the other one. Find my mark. Slightly over the edge of the anvil. And then just hit in the same spot. Till you've got a nice little lump. You don't want to go too far, otherwise you'll split right the way through into the fullering, which you don't really want. Pull it towards yourself. Don't thin it out too much. I'm going to leave a little bit of meat in there. You've got some strength. And again, just tidy it up over the beak. Knock that in there if there's any distortion. Set the clip at an angle. And again, just run round that edge. Just finishes it off. symmetrical again. Try and tidy it all up. And again, just back pritchel. You can see that. Upright, a little bit of pitch, a little bit more, a bit more. go. Nothing. A little bit. A little bit more. And quite a lot. And obviously you back pritchel the same way as you've pritcheled from the, or the opposite way to the way you've pritcheled from the front. So that they remain the same. So let's give them a quick clean up. There you go. A couple of everyday shoes, nothing fancy, you're not winning any competitions, but they'll drop on a pony somewhere. Nice little pair of shoes. 
quite happy with them. They'll go on a treat on somebody. Now your clips should be about the width of the material, should be the height, and the base of the of the um, clip, that width, should be about the width of the material as well. So you've got plenty of meat, good size. There you go, nothing fancy. Back to basics. Thanks for watching, and we'll catch you on the next one.